Hello everyone, I'm Dale Jackson and today I'll be discussing with you maximum current draw and derating factor in semiconductors. So maximum current that a semiconductor can handle, say a BJT, depends on the amount of power that it can handle and the amount of power that it can handle for BJT is going to be IC times VCE and if we were to plot this and we have our, our amount of power that it could handle and we kept that um, that amount of power that it could handle constant, we would find that the, the curve that would keep us into a safe zone would be like a, um, a curve that looks like this, like a, a decaying exponential almost, pretty much, for the most part. And this area here would be our safe zone anything outside of this anything outside of that would be in danger of overheating So that's pretty straightforward. And then the next thing, derating factor. Well, derating factor refers to the amount of power that a semiconductor can handle as the temperature increases. So it, uh, it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory to a certain extent in the description itself and in, in the word. Um, it's just that uh, it, it's that the power handling capability of our semiconductor gets derated as our temperature goes up. So in other words, it can't handle as much power as it did uh, originally at its, its standard uh, reference temperature. So in other words, say at 25 degrees Celsius, if something could handle, say, 625 milliwatts then what this would look like uh, as the temperature increased uh, yeah in increase would be that it would go down and so um, This could be some arbitrary temperature. But what we'll, we'll be most interested in is knowing the, um, the general curve here is just a straight line. And so what we'll do now is we'll, uh, we'll plot some of this on MATLAB and we'll use some specific numbers and put those in based upon uh, this derating rate, which will be uh, noted in, in uh, a data sheet for a specific uh, circuit element or, or component, semiconductor component, it'll, it'll have a, uh, a coefficient for this. And so let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, couple of specific examples in MATLAB. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll take a look at our, our power dissipation limit for a transistor for a 2N3904. Um, our power limit at, at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius will be 625 milliwatts. Our 25 degrees Celsius is our reference temperature, which is uh, generally basically room temperature. 
And so the values for VCE that we'll use is 5, 10, 15, and so on, up to 40. And we've already pre-calculated out the currents that will stay at 625 uh, milliwatt uh, limit. And so looking at our plot here, we can see that it is a, uh, a pretty much like an exponential decay that we have. And we'll look at the pairs here. So at 5 volts VCE for our bipolar junction transistor, it can tolerate a current of up to, for our, for our IC, our, our current of our collector, it can tolerate up to 125 milliamps. And then as we go and increase our voltage VCE all the way to 40 volts, it can tolerate up to 15.63 milliamps at 40 volts and still be at 625 milliwatts. So we can see that we're going to have to run less, less and less and less current through it as we have a design that has more uh, uh, voltage between the collector and the emit emitter of the transistor. And this is just a, um, a graph that, that confirms that the two pairs that, we, that we've uh, specified are within a 625 milliwatt. Uh, limit. So next, what we'll take a look at here is a is our derating factor, and so what the derating factor is is that if temperature rises, the power dissipation handling goes down five milliwatts for every one degree Celsius increase, and this is uh, specifically for the 2N3904. The 5 milliwatt per degree deduction is called the derating factor. Um, well actually you you multiply it by the difference in temperature so that's how how they come up with the name derating factor. And so for instance the 2N3904 can dissipate up to 625 milliwatts at, si at 25 degrees Celsius for an ambient temperature of 45 degrees Celsius, which is a rise of 20 degrees Celsius, this becomes 625 minus 5 milliwatts per degree times 45 degrees minus 25 degrees, which uh, comes out to be 525 milliwatts. So we can see that we went from 625 milliwatts to 525 milliwatts for a 20 degree increase and uh, ambient temperature. So let's go ahead and take a look and, and see what this uh, result looks like. And sure enough, it is a line. Uh, it's, it's linear. And so if we start off at 25 degrees Celsius, this is ambient temperature. This is the transistor powering, power handling um, that we'll take into account in our design. If we were running it at some, uh, say something as, as hot as 50 degrees Celsius, we'd have to respect a, a 500 milliwatt uh, power limit for our device instead of the, the original 625 milliwatts. And for a, a temperature as high as 75 degrees Celsius, uh, our power dissipation handling would be lowered to 375 milliwatts and that makes sense because if you if you were to surround surround a device in ambient temperature that's higher it, it should have a, a more difficult time getting rid of heat at at the same rate uh, that it would at a lower temperature it'll it'll affect the uh, uh, how fast it gets rid of heat because there's already uh, a certain amount of heat around it that has actually gone up. So next what we'll do finally is we'll, we'll take a look at both derating factors and um, our ICE versus VCE curve. 
that we saw generally looks like a decaying exponential. And so we'll see some, some worst case scenarios and uh, an ideal or, or best case scenario uh, given uh, our different graphs. And so first we'll make sure that our pairs of power uh, dissipation limit for each one of our pairs for all of our say like our our voltage and and current pairs equal our limits this is a 600 milliwatt limit and that makes sense this is a 500 milliwatt limit and these are the pairs that are in the MATLAB file this is a 400 milliwatt limit in each one of those pairs So with that being the case, on our top graph here, um, we have VCE equals uh, 5 volts at 25 degrees Celsius. We can handle our 125 milliamps. If we go all the way here to our 40 um, volts VCE, again, we're we're at our 15.63 uh, current limit for the device if we want to be uh, within spec of, of our power, uh, power handling limit. But next, if we go down to, say, like if we, if we operate from 25 degrees Celsius, because each one of these lines are for a different temperature, if we go all the way up to like 70 degrees Celsius uh, at 5 volts we can we can only handle uh, 80 milliamps and all the way at 40 volts we, we can only handle uh, like about 10 milliamps and still stay within the the, the newly rated um, power handling capacity of the transistor and so that generally tells us a lot about uh, our power handling and, and we, we can know from this that if we, if we operate at a higher temperature then we need to lower um, the amount of power that we're having our transistor dissipate and also if we operate at a higher voltage then we're also going to be limited in how much current we can uh, we can have running through our device and so this does it for this video demonstration thank you and have a nice day